Uh, good morning, everyone. My name's uh, Martin Jago, a steering committee member at Directors Lab West, and I want to welcome you to Directors Lab West Connect, eight days of conversations uh, by theatre makers and live streamed by our partners at HowlRound to their website and to our Directors Lab West Facebook page, where you can join the chat, tell us who you are and where you're tuning in from, and also ask questions for the Q&A following our speaker's conversation. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Jennifer uh, uh, Brazel, I'll say that again. Uh, thank you to the wonderful Jennifer Brazel for providing ASL interpretation and to all our ASL interpreters uh, throughout the course of this week. We, we really are so grateful for your support. And you can also head to our Facebook page for auto captioning. So this particular um, session today is all about connecting with uh, international theatre makers and hearing global perspectives from theatre artists outside the US. And I'd now like to introduce our speakers. Uh, we have Daniela Atiencia. And uh, Daniela Atiencia is a Latinx Canadian theatre director based in Vancouver. She is a bilingual director, a dramaturg and divisor whose work has been seen in Colombia, where she was born and raised, and further afield in countries like Lithuania, in England, uh, Denmark, and here in North America. Um, Gianna Formicone is an Italian theatre director based in Germany. She directs contemporary drama and works on projects that are based on songs or poems or short texts by contemporary dramatists and then reimagines those texts through a devised process. Uh, we're also joined this morning by Mikiko Shibuya. Uh, she is a Japanese theatre director currently based in Tokyo. She's lived and worked in Japan and in Australia and here as well in, in North America. As an artist, she directs and writes and adapts plays and musicals. Actually, mu musical theatre is her main focus. And she also loves to create devised work. So in an interesting way, this is one of the things that connects the three of you. I had a chance to discover when looking into your uh, biographies uh, in a little more detail. And uh, last but certainly not least is our moderator this morning, Abhavit Shaked, and she's an Israeli theatre director based in Israel. She's also the founding artistic director of Instead Israel, which is a, a director's lab. Um, and she is a theatre director, a playwright and group facilitator of community theatre. So uh, these four wonderful people, theatre artists, uh, directors, uh, devisers, dramaturgs, are going to be in conversation with each other for the next 30 minutes or so and I'm shortly going to disappear from your screens and I'll return later in the conversation with some questions from the uh, the Facebook chat and also questions provided by uh, some some of the people that registered for this event earlier so uh, thank you everyone for being here and for taking part and uh, please uh, take it away Avavit and enjoy the conversation I'll be back soon So welcome and so uh, wonderful to see everybody. And for those who cannot see us uh, uh, with the visual impairs, I will describe myself. I am Avivit Shaked. I am from Israel and I'm in a room uh, with um, Indian objects. I have a, a painting of uh, um, mountains and river uh, behind me and to my right there is a dream catcher and, and a door um, this is me I look uh, I'm very pale actually I have brown hair and most of it already white but you cannot see that and I wear blue t-shirt so this is me we will uh, just, uh, I want you to hear and know who are the people that will talk uh, in, the, in this conversation. So please describe yourself and let us know who you are so people can recognize also your voices. Can uh, I start? Daniela? Oh, Jana? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Jana and I'm in Augsburg. This is my place. Actually, I don't think you can see so much in my place. It's just uh, a wall. <laughs> and I, I think I look like a Mediterranean uh, woman. 
I would say, but not so sure. Black hair and yeah. So very, very happy to be part of this. It's so great to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Jana. And Daniela? Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Daniela. I'm in my bedroom right now. I think we can see a, a black, uh, sorry, a white wall. And I've got some fairy lights behind me. <clears throat> I have dark brown hair, which is um, styled to the side. My head is sh uh, shaved on the left side. Uh, I'm wearing a red top and uh, long earrings. And very excited, happy, and honored to be part of this conversation. So thank you for having me. Makiko. Hi, I'm Makiko Shibuya. I'm talking from Tokyo. And now it's 3 a.m. 3 a.m. here. So I have to close my curtain and this is my kitchen. <laughs> but yeah, um, I have a typical Japanese face and black hair. And I'm very petite, small. And I'm wearing black t-shirt with colorful bubbles on me, which express my excitement to join you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was uh, super. Now we can start. And I want to start actually with um, something that came up uh, on my mind uh, while thinking about what are we going to talk about? And I just want you to have it as a title or maybe as a question or a phrase or whatever. If you wanna refer to that during the conversation or it brings you something, please do share. And the, uh, the phrase is, we will make theater everywhere. That's something to have in our, have in our mind. And the first question that I, would love to ask you is what is happening right now within your artistic community as a response to the pandemic? We'll start from there. Whoever wants to answer, it's your call. Just start talking. Okay, I'll start. So I'm in Germany and um, okay. I'm Italian, but I'm living in Germany. So actually, I've been um, I've, I'm very in contact with Italy. So I was experiencing this pandemic um, a bit earlier, or also stronger than the German people here, because it started before in Italy, and then yeah, you know, in Italy it hasn't been so funny. And um, what? What happened here is actually that everybody started to like, of course, to think about what is this and what is going to 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 make with us. What what does it mean for the theater world and how do we want to to treat this um, this huge situation? Because we all feel that. It's something so big. It's something bigger than than we are, and we don't know how to to cope with this situation. And actually, it's nice because I have the feeling that a lot of people are reacting very in in a very creative way, which is nice. And of course, yeah, through the digital world, which is world which is not so the theater world. So it's a bit uh, difficult, I think, for all of us. But there is a lot of, um, I think we all want to, to, not to not to die with this pandemic. We want to react. Yeah. OK, great. Creativity, create creativity, create creativity. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think in, it's um, it seems to be a bit of a, a, a global response in our industry to uh, stay alive and say, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, be creative. I I definitely see that happening in Canada as well. There's been an overwhelming amount uh, of uh, online response. Um, this uh, initiative to go digital obviously has been very strong because we are all at home. 
Um, but for today, I definitely wanted to highlight um, some uh, Canadian artists who are also trying to think um, non-digitally and trying to engage with their audiences this way. And I'd be curious to see if it's been uh, in your countries as well. Um, for example, a theater company in Toronto is doing something called Mundane Mysteries, where um, you can sign up and they give you a call on your actual phone um, every day for seven days. Uh, you give them a mystery to solve in your house. Obviously, it has to be a mundane one, but they do a series of improvisations with you over the phone and it's a phone call that you can um, uh, look forward to every day in the hopes that they'll solve uh, your mystery like my cup went missing in the kitchen or something like that um, and then there was uh, um, another initiative where um, an artist was missing her friends and so she asked 10 of her friends if they could pick a place that was in biking distance to where she lived and if they could just narrate five minutes of why that uh, place was so significant and then she would bike to all these places while listening to her friends talk about uh, the significance of this place and um, therefore invited other people to do the same and so she um, compiled so if I messaged her she would compile all my 10 friends and then I can either actually do the bike ride or I can do it on Google Street View if I'm not able to leave my home um, and had several initiatives like this. So yeah, I'm excited to see um, artists in Canada also thinking outside the box and trying to get us away from um, the, the screen. <laughs> so just to understand, they are not on uh, uh, in between them. They are not online. It's just the audio. You can yes, see yeah. the visual. Well, it depends. So yeah, I mean, ideally, it's trying to get you out of your house and do a little bit of exercise and um, having your actual friends voices uh, okay. in your ear through uh, earbuds, and then you bike to these significant places and you hear them talk about it. Um, but if for some reason you can't leave your home, um, then they encourage you to do a Google Street View from your computer um, and walk, walk it through virtually while you're listening to them. Yeah. That's super cool. I think that this initiation, this kind of stuff, we should share uh, later on. Maybe uh, there is a possibility on, on, you know, on a chat or whatever to put on the link of this great stuff because they are and it's super interesting to, to watch that or to see that. Thank you, Daniela. Of course. Uh, so for me in Tokyo, Actually, it was very interesting because I just read an article about the similar thing about the phone improv. It was written that they especially do for elders, elderly people who usually live by themselves. And it's very help, helpful for them to communicate. So that was one thing that was also happening in Japan as well. But for me, what's very interesting is that uh, many of the theater people are being united. And of course, there was a couple of union here, but now that we're starting a new kind of union and um, trying to figure this out together. So there are like several groups that is doing like theater people are doing that kind of fundraising to help themselves, support themselves. And another group is a bunch of associations. They are asking um, more support for the government, which was very successful that we got another budget from the country. And another group is about a bunch of big, huge producers who are also um, having a trouble, uh, difficulty in this situation. So for me, it's very, um fascinating how we are so united and also um the people who were used to be rivals are now becoming a team and for example uh one of the big like anime um theater producer is trying to make a theater a theater district virtually and he is gathering people from other genre of the 
um, of in the house of theater. So I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. Of course, it's a hard time, but I'm really, I'm seeing a lot of future and a new style of theater and people really wants to do theater. I, yes, Jana. Can I go back to the not digital theater world? Because I mean, at the beginning I've done some streaming shows because it was the beginning. And then I told myself, okay, this is not theater actually. I I mean, it's okay now, like for, um, for like, um, how do you say, provis provisory? How do you say like that for, for a situation that is not um, that is not going to be the the situation that we want to to have, but I actually I don't like this. So I was always thinking about how can I do it uh, in a not digital way, and of course I've done also here in Augsburg in the city I'm living. I've done a telephone action so it is called like five minutes of joy so we just offer i I've, I've written to a lot of art artists here in the city and i asked them if they want to join this action so somebody some people elder people in the city can just call the number and then an artist is going to call and to say a poem or to sing a song or to play something and so this yeah this is nice and then the second step is that we are going to have actually tomorrow we're going to have a live show in front of a building so all the people that are so elder people and people with disabilities are going just to watch from the windows and we are going to say some poems and to play some uh, some songs and yeah i'm very excited <laughs> it's going to be like Real theater, not digital. Ah. <laughs> I want to say that you just made me cry, really. I work with elderly population and this is like, this is brilliant. A lot of things happen here in Israel in front of the elderly houses, but not a theater. Uh, people come out and, and sing. There are singers that does that, but but to do theater, and this is so important for those people that appreciate it very much. Uh, this is wonderful. Uh, if I want to share something that happened here, and I'm connecting to what Akiko said before, um, and the fact that we are sharing, I feel that there is more, more and more sharing. And I can say that also, uh, that a lot of artists in Israel, uh, they created workshops for the Zoom and they are sharing the workshop for writing and for, uh, um, um, I don't know, uh, vir uh, visual arts and a lot of stuff that they can share and people can try that at home. So uh, to create, uh, if we are talking about device work and I'm appreciating your your way and I, I myself love device work and I'm trying to do that as much as I can also. Uh, so from that point of view, I think that a lot of like there is a, an artist, uh, I think her name is Nofar in Israel and she's doing a, a workshop at, at her home and she arouses questions for people and they create together everyone from their own home, from their own spaces. And this is kind of a device work. Uh, talking about device work, uh, did you have, I, I don't know, I, it's not one of the questions, but is it, do you have any ideas or, you know, seeds of ideas for that, for the next device work? Uh, do you mean specifically digitally or in general? I don't know. It can be digitally and it can be not digitally. It can be international or, or not international. But some like evoke you. Do you have some stuff that you want? Oh my God, I have to do that. This is like my next device. Um, I don't 
<laughs> oh, it's a secret. Okay. No, no, no. Big oh, secret. I can tell. We cannot I tell that. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of different things. Um, so I'm very lucky because on Monday, I'm going to go to the north of Germany and I'm going to be in a theater with actors with distance. And we are going to rehearse in a normal way. So I'm so happy. And then I, I actually, um, I'm actually trying to uh, get the money for a project here that I want to do like in heaven. I just tell you because I mean, if this idea is going to be, if, if other people want to, to get this idea and to do something, I think it's nice. I mean, I just share with you. I want to put all the actors like in cabins, in, in like in a glass cabin or something like that, so that you can keep the distance and you can shout because the problem is also that you cannot shout, you cannot sing because if you're shouting, then your, your breath is, can get more, can get, uh, how do you say, um, longer. Uh, more in the distance so mm -hmm. it's yeah then the, the audience should have a, a bigger distance to the actor so I want to put them them like in cabins and then I want my main topic is going to be the contact so you have in the form already like a way of of avoiding avoiding the contact and you have also the so the the situation of Corona, because I mean, it is we cannot have this contact with the other people, and the audience can just walk from one station to the next station. And then I wanna take just different uh, poems or songs, and also some some movements um, connected to this topic of contact. Yeah. It's interesting you say that, Jenna. I. I Honestly, I really hope this is the resurgence of site specific work um, and, and really starting to think about theater outside of our conventional spaces. I think that's what we are being called to think about, especially since a lot of the conversation has been around how to serve our immediate communities. And um, I think it's 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 a good starting place to answer your question. Um, I mean, it wasn't meant to like, oh no, secret. It's just, yeah, I think it's um it's it's really uh, fascinating to hear you think about um, our immediate surroundings. You know, I live close to a hospital, so um, there's a lot of healthcare workers in my neighborhood, right? And so starting to think about how I could serve them, um, lots of conversations around um, audiences being in vehicles and performers being able to um, perform for um, people in their vehicles or if you're outside, yeah, through their windows um, and just non-conventional spaces. Uh, if that is the future of theater, that's really, really exciting. Yeah. Um, so maybe like adding to Daniela, I also thought of site specific because of the distance. And um, for me, my interest is now in musical theater. So I was thinking some ideas for doing musical theater in site specific situation because musical theater is about singing and dancing and it's really hard to avoid the distance. And in terms of it's not exactly device work, but as a collaborative work, I'm trying to put together something that we tr uh, collaborate internationally, of course, online. But because of this situation, I'm focusing more on the writing process because that could be done internationally and it could be something for the future. And that could be something that might be interesting to challenge as a collaboration, but under the same theme, theme because we are all under this same situation. So that's something that what I'm trying to put on. This is uh, the, the word that you gave us, Jana, the contact. So the fact that we are connecting, but we are not in contact. That's very interesting. And the fact that you are thinking out of the box is amazing. I like it very much. Uh, I want to ask you the next question. 
connected uh, but not connected. Um, have any international collaboration working virtually been successful for you? Did you experience something during this time, the pandemic, or or not even not virtual? It will be okay. Um. Okay, it was not during this time because, um, yeah, you cannot do so much in a short time. <laughs> but so I don't know if you wanna if you wanna get to know something about that. I had some international projects, and of course we were just in contact digitally, and it. I mean, it was not a problem. Of course, you don't have the the feeling of being together, but if you want to do something international that you can also pay, <laughs> then usually like the digital way gives you the possibility of connecting and then bringing the other countries to your theater project. So, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, so actually I'm right in the middle of that uh, process. I'm trying to put together some musical uh, theater artists from three or four countries together to work on one project. And what I found now is, um, I found that the time differences really works well. Of course, it depends on the country, but now that we are all in a similar situation, our schedule is more open and people are at home in mm -hmm. daytime. So we can schedule our meeting in a really convenient way and we can work on <laughs> something in each country when others are asleep. So I, I feel like we're still, and because of this um, situation, I feel that distance is the same, even though you're in the same country or in another far away, like on the opposite of the world, I feel the same distance and I feel more working to get a sense of working together so I'm not sure if it will be successful or not but <laughs> I'm in the middle of trying to put this together the experience is the success <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, Makiko, if you could um, talk a little bit more about that in terms of how are you, um, so you spoke a little bit about um, bringing people together for the writing. So mm -hmm. um, how is how is that structured? Did you, um, yeah, like is everybody contributing a little bit of the story and then you come together and talk about it? Like how does that collaboration work? Um, actually, we haven't uh, released yet. We haven't announced the project yet. So, <laughs> so I can't speak Sorry. much of the detail, but yeah, very close to what you said. Like we, we have the same theme and towards the sa same theme, theme, each writer will write their own songs and I'm the person who put together as one work. That's kind of thing that what I'm trying to do in a form of musical theater. Whoever hear us and wants to join, <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> this is this is amazing because we're creating opportunities and the fact of that that this is the lab. I think this is the most amazing thing that happens during the lab, and this is an opportunity to work to continue work. Because when you're in the lab, when it happened actually, then you separate and and maybe you can connect during the year if you have great ideas or whatever. But this is actually an opportunity. So if someone wants to call for someone to join the uh, their own work, so I think this is great to do that here. And I want to share also something from myself. Um, that I actually, I really love to learn, to study. And I studied, uh, I went to New York actually uh, before the pandemic or at the beginning of the pandemic 
and I, we had to do, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, study the Chekhov technique uh, mm -hmm. in New York. And I uh, finished the uh, half of the course and then it stopped because of the pandemic and I needed to come back to Israel. But then everybody was, it was an international program and we decided that we are going to perform the, the finishing show and to work on this on Zoom. So we mm. did all the rehearsal process on Zoom and mm. we were, it was a long Christmas dinner. That was the name of the, uh, the play and, and Leonard Petit directed it and we just were on Zoom. And yesterday, we uh, two days ago, we performed it in front of an audience on Zoom. So that's an international thing that also successfully happened um, from my side. It's, um, it, yeah. Go ahead, Sorry, go ahead, Martin. Jonna. I'm gonna just go back to something because uh, Daniela and Matiko um, told that, oh, what is nice is also that uh, the, the artist community is getting together. This is happening here as well. So every time when the government says like, yeah, we're going, we want to help you and then they don't do anything, we just put all of us together and then we shout very loud <laughs> and then they listen to us. So this is something that we really learned here in Germany that putting us together is better because we are we can be louder and it is not about the being having a con being how do you say having concurrency how do you say to be in concurrence to be against to be one against the other it's better to be together yeah well i, I want to jump in there because you mentioned um governments and uh i i learned yesterday that uh shinzo abe uh the japanese prime minister has just lifted the state of emergency so uh i think we've got time for a couple more questions and i just wanted to ask um is there any specific government advice where you are about when we're going to get back into the theater um you know for example uh makiko um it is, you know, has life returned to sort of uh, normality now in, in, in Japan where you are, or is there still social distancing? Uh, maybe you could uh, start with, with that question. Yeah, um, of course we are not in normality, but a step by step we are, um, of course, towards to open the theater. Mm -hmm. At least there's like a, a strict guidance to open the theater that governments uh, showed us and if we can do that we are allowed to open so for example from yeah from this weekend I think there's a small theater which is going to open with one one man show but without an audience and they're gonna do live streaming and I think most of the theater are aiming towards this summer because now that we are allowed to get out, this is the time that we can actually start rehearsing. So probably maybe like small theater might open without audience mm. in June, but not a big theater. And especially if we want to tour, that's another step. So even though we are allowed to go out in terms of theater, I feel we there's a lot of things how to run the rehearsal and with avoiding the distances and we were even there was a discussion whether actors should wear a mask on stage. Oh which really? Is, yeah. <laughs> you don't mean oh, theatrical no. masks. You mean no. <laughs> <laughs> medical masks. Okay. Yeah, what's well, interesting, it sounds that actually that uh although there are restrictions still in place there that you are sort of some some way down the line from from the situation here uh mm -hmm. where we're maybe looking at uh you know much longer before we can get back into the the theaters how about in um where you are daniela uh, have you had any specific advice about uh you know when you when you can get back into a physical theater 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I mean, it, it's looking like government is saying that we're either in the last phase or penultimate phase um, of what, you know, reopening the economy. But um, I think that a lot of theater companies also experienced in the last two months um, making decisions and then having to go back on those decisions because of course, the situation is so volatile and it's constantly changing that I think now we're at a point where um, it's it's uh, trickier to plan and make specific concrete choices about um, making shows just because even if um, we're given that date of September, uh, experts are also saying that the fall is when we might get a second wave. And so yeah. I think people are feeling a little nervous um, about um depending on these potential dates um but yeah as far as i know they're saying september for gatherings over 50 people um but i wouldn't be surprised if it's not until uh 2021 where wow. we start opening the theater again mm. yeah and uh does anyone else want to make a, a um say something on that uh either either uh from your perspective Avavit in in israel because I think you mentioned that you were involved in some street theater. You were able to take some performance out onto the streets. Is that is that like a step in the in the process of getting back to live theater? Um, it's uh, dealing with the obstacles. So I said we cannot go indoors and we cannot perform in venues. So we can just go out to the street and perform. Uh, as Jana said before, uh, in front of places uh, or on the street uh, for groups that uh, organized group. So there, there was an organized tour uh, for people who wants to see street art. And I uh, suggested that, hey, we can do a, a short uh, performance on the street during this because this is important and we have the chance to say something and my show my performance specifically was about actually it was a some kind of a protest hey we see everybody uh, going back to work here in israel because we start going back to normal but the last and the last 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 people are the people from the arts and this is crazy because you cannot survive without arts. This is something uh, that we know from our history. Uh, and this is something that's so important for us to, 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 to shout for the artists to, to say, we will create wherever it is. And we will, uh, because art is our life. And I think there is no life without art. And uh, Jana, um... I think you've already addressed this actually when you said that actually you're going to do this performance uh, in front of the building. So it, it's so interesting to hear all of these ideas that when we're faced with these limitations, our our drive and our creative energy is is kind of you know hardwired to find a way for us to 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 bring communities together through uh, you know live performance somehow. And I have to agree with you. Um, you know, for me. Uh, as a as a technophobe, the, the ch I mean, there have been so many benefits to being able to connect this way. But also, I feel that um, you know uh, that this is something different. And actually, in a previous interview, Jana, I just want to remind you of something you said. You said that this is a symptom as well of of this pandemic. And when this pandemic is over, this will go away. I mean, I think that's that's true. Uh, but also it will there will be artists who who embrace this technology and employ it um so it's 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 so wonderful to hear uh such a kind of diverse group of people and i've really enjoyed the conversation and sadly we are running out of time so now might be a good uh, time to to bring you this last question and uh, in closing um, would you briefly share something that you've learned or discovered during this quarantine or pandemic that you plan to incorporate into your practice as an artist moving forward? And um, does anyone want to jump in on this? Something you've learned during this pandemic that you're going to 
uh, incorporate into your practice as an artist moving forward? Um, Mackie? Yeah, I thought like what, what I gained was it was very useful to do rehearsal on Zoom because we could focus more on our voices and text. So in terms of like the process of reading, I thought this style is, was also very effective and something that we can also cooperate. And this international like collaboration is something that I want to keep on doing. And also personally, I have four months baby. So it was a great, for me, it was a great opportunity to try to figure out my life balance working at home and still try to direct something. And it was a very good opportunity to keep that life balance in this situation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And that's, um, so you're actually, you're actually used to being up at this time of the morning anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's fitted into your schedule, but I really hear you on that in, in the way in which it can serve us as well, uh, this kind of technology. Um, Jana, how, how about you? Is there, is there something you're going to take forward from this experience? I guess it is something more about me. I mean, and it is more about the way I feel. I really learned again that... Um, what helps me is to be uh, resilient. Do you say this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is also like what theater and the arts can can help us. I mean, the hard art can help us to be resilient because through creativity, then we can just create. And so this is what what I'm going to to feel more for the future and yeah probably this is what i yeah what i'm going to have more in myself for the future thank you so much for that and um how about you daniela um i think something that's been highlighted in my own spirit is um how easily it, it is for our industry and us artists just because of the the pace at which we have to manage life is how self-absorbed we can become um, in ourselves in our world in our art um, and just a, a, a reminder that that can take us away from having a generous spirit uh, not just towards uh, the work that we do but just our outside life and so it's, um, yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about how I can practice more generosity once we start returning to a somewhat normal life um, and just remind myself of how easily and quickly I can be absorbed into that um, self world and, and forget about uh, family, friends, loved ones, or even my community, or even the people that I'm working with, uh, because I'm just so absorbed in what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, I would like to practice more the act of, of that generosity that we're all feeling through these times. Yeah, that's a wonderful answer. And one I really connect with it, this, the limitation of being in your own apartment or and, and slightly sort of cut off, although this is so wonderful to connect this way. Uh, that we have the opportunity at least to do this. And I also want to include Abhavi in that question because you know, she's been asking the questions, but I'm also interested to learn from her as a theater maker, um, what she's going to take forward from, from this time and this pandemic. Abhavi? Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Uh, so actually what I've learned that uh, it's a, a lot uh, connected to what Daniela said, uh, what happened here, uh, that during this time, short, very short time, we had so many holidays and the biggest holidays, Passover, and we celebrated it through Zoom with all our families around the world. So basically people that you would never see so much, then you see them and you get, the, get together. So, and there was a production that I really wanted to do uh, for a lot of years, 
and it occurred to me that, that it just connected the uh, the threads connected and I like oh my god I can do that through the zoom and it is it is a, it's actually some kind of a ceremony that ceremony that we need to do all over the world at the same time in this, different places and different languages and to see each other and exchange information and it was written in the 70s and I don't know but the the artist wrote she wants that to be online at the same time I don't know how she knew online or video or whatever but this is amazing this is crazy and yeah this is Liliana Tlan it's, she's a very interesting uh, artist she already died but that's Thank you so my much for that's yeah. wonderful. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I wish we had another two or three hours to chat about some of these questions. I've got a whole page full of questions here. Um, but but I just want to finish by saying thank you to all of our fantastic speakers this morning, and also to our partners at HowlRound, and of course to the wonderful Jennifer Brazel, our ASL interpreter and uh, who's done a fantastic job. Thank you so much. And this conversation will be archived and available with closed captions on both uh, howlround.com and the Directors Lab uh, west.com. Um, we should also just take a moment to say thank you to our long-term supporters, people like SDC and uh, the Pasadena Playhouse and uh, Boston Court Theatre. So, so people uh, like uh, Jessica Kubzanski and um, you know, Danny Feldman and before him, Sheldon Epps. All of these partner organizations have helped keep Directors Lab West alive with, with uh, selfless um, support over many, many years. So we really are so grateful for them, especially during this difficult time. We want to sh show solidarity to our fellow theater makers and uh, theater arts organizations here in Los Angeles and further afield. So we hope you'll join us tomorrow uh, when the, uh, the conversation is going to take place between Scarlett Kim and Matty Barber Bockerman, and they will be discussing reimagining liveness and connection for virtual space. So that sounds like a, a very sort of timely conversation. So finally, just to say one more time, thank you everyone for being with us today. And we hope that this conversation sparks more conversation Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank Thanks, thank everyone. You.